Climbing plants are excellent garden companions, useful for hiding unsightly weeds, or covering a bare wall, or fence with flowers, and foliage. They can appear magical, they begin small, and unassuming, but as they grow, they take on new life, and heights. Climbing plants, also known as trailing plants, or flowering vines, help you make the most of your vertical garden space, no matter how large or small it is. Here, we've compiled a list of the best climbing plants for your garden. 1. Alamanda Alamanda is not your typical indoor plant. It is a tropical species that requires a lot of warmth and moisture to survive during the summer. Although it can be grown as a small shrub, it is a loose climber that benefits from support. It is typically planted in the spring and grows quickly. Although some varieties have been modified to stay small, alamanda plants typically grow to be quite large. In their natural habitat, they develop into fairly large shrubs. Warm temperatures are required for the alamanda cathartica plant to grow and bloom properly. It prefers direct sunlight but will tolerate partial shade. This plant prefers loamy or sandy soils and requires a cooler temperature for its roots than its vines. It thrives in fertile, moist soils. During the growing season, the woody vine should be fertilized and watered on a regular basis for optimum growth. 2. American Wisteria, Wisteria frutescens. Wisteria is a magical vine with lilac blue blooms and lacy foliage that cascades down. The most popular ornamental variety is Chinese wisteria, which, while beautiful, can be invasive. American wisteria, with its more controlled growth, is the ideal solution for many gardeners who yearn for this plant's stunning flowers. This variety, wisteria frutescens, which is native to North America, can still reach up to 30 feet in height and width, showering any neighboring structure in clusters of mesmerizing blue flowers. However, it is possible that you will have to wait five to six years for the vine to reach maturity and produce flowers. It has pinnate, bright, dark leaves and pea-like flowers which hang in five to six inch clusters. It can bloom in full sun or partial shade. It can also tolerate a variety of soil types, which adds to its adaptability. 3. Butterfly Pea An herbaceous twining vine with eye-catching blue flowers, the butterfly pea flower, is a low-maintenance option for natural food coloring. The plant can grow as a vine, or creeper, and reaches a height of 1 to 2 meters. Butterfly pea is a trailing vine that blooms in the spring and summer with pinkish blue, or violet blooms. It is also known as bird butterfly pea vines, climbing butterfly pea, or wild blue vine. Butterfly pea flowers are loved by birds and bees in addition to butterflies, as their name suggests. Spurred butterfly pea vines can be grown as annuals if you live in a cooler climate, but they can be grown in USDA plant hardiness zones 10 and 11. Even nutrient-poor soil can support the growth of butterfly pea flowers, but sandy, acidic soil is preferred. This plant does well in all types of lighting, including direct sunlight, partial shade, and semi-shade. 4. Bengal Clock Plant Bengal Trumpet, Sky Flower, and Bengal Clock Vine are additional names for Thunbergia grandiflora. India, specifically, in Southeast Asia, is where this vine originally originated. The climbing plant Thunbergia has straightforward five-petal flowers and green leaves in the shape of hearts. The three inches violet blue flowers on the Thunbergia grandiflora have a yellow throat. This vigorous, evergreen vine can reach a height of six meters or higher. Make sure to plant Bengal clockvine in a spot with some shade if you want it to grow. Even though this robust vine will thrive in full sun, with some southern exposure, a hot afternoon Sunday may be too much. A little shade will also keep the plant greener and more attractive. The best soil for growing Thunbergia grandiflora is one that is high in organic matter and has good drainage so that any extra moisture can be drained away. 5. Actinidia Under the right conditions and care, kiwis, also known as Actinidia deliciosa, can be grown in many backyard gardens. Kiwi fruit grow quickly 
and are best planted in the early spring or late fall. They flourish in consistently warm climates and adore the sun. Plant your kiwi fruit in soil that retains moisture and is rich in nutrients. Set the plant at least a foot away from the base if you are planting against a wall to prevent the roots from being in a rain shadow. Vine spacing should be at least 3 meters, 10 feet, apart in order to prevent tangles while keeping vines close enough to promote pollination. 6. Ampelopsis Ampelopsis brevipedunculata elegans, porcelain berry vine, is a small growing climber that deserves to be more widely known. It has pink, cream, and green variegated leaves that resemble those of a small hop or vine and contrast nicely with the pink tendrils that the plant uses to attach itself to a trellis or other similar support. Small gem-like turquoise fruits appear after a hot summer. Porcelain vines thrive in USDA plant hardiness zones 5 to 9. Plant porcelain vines in either full sun or partial shade. They prefer moist, well-drained soil, but can tolerate drought once established. The vines climb using twining tendrils. Plant them close to a strong supporting structure, such as a fence, tree, trellis, or arbor. Keep in mind that the vine can grow to be 10 to 20 feet, 3 to 6 meters, long, and quite heavy when choosing a supporting structure. Although established porcelain vines can go for weeks without additional watering, they benefit from slow, deep watering during extended dry spells. 7. Black-Eyed Susan Vine the tropical perennial black-eyed Susan vine, Thunbergia alata, is frequently grown as an annual flowering vine. At the garden center, hanging baskets with it are a common sight. This charming flowering vine requires little maintenance. Green stems and leaves are common. And flowers typically have black centers and are deep yellow, white, or orange in color. There are also varieties with red, salmon, and ivory flowers. Black-eyed Susan is a fast-growing vine that requires a trellis or vertical stand to be supported. The plant is fastened to vertical structures by the vines, which lend support around one another. You'll need some advice on how to care for black-eyed Susan vines because this plant has some unique requirements. The plant first needs well-drained soil, but if the soil becomes overly dry, it will start to wilt. Particularly for plants in pots, the moisture level is a fine line. Never let it become soggy, just keep it moist. Outdoor black-eyed Susan vine maintenance is simple as long as you water it sparingly, provide it with a trellis and deadhead. To keep the plant on the trellis or line, you can lightly prune it in the higher zones where it thrives as a perennial. Plant ties will be useful for young plants as they establish themselves on their growing structure. 8. Bomaria multiflora the multi-stemmed climber Bomaria multiflora has narrow oblong mid to light green leaves. From late spring to fall, the narrowly funnel-shaped flowers appear in rounded clusters. Inside, they are bright red to orange, orange, or yellow, with red, brown, or green spots. And they are followed by lobed bright red fruits. Bomaria is native to the forests, where it receives mostly tree-filtered sunlight. Except in the morning and late afternoon, it should be protected from prolonged sun exposure. The best sun is filtered sun. Feed with a general-purpose fertilizer containing micronutrients during active growth periods. 9. Boston Ivy Few plants are as suitable as Boston Ivy for situations where a climbing vine is required that can cling to almost anything and tolerate both sunny and shady conditions. Due to the lush greenery that covers their storied walls, this is the same plant that gives Ivy League universities their nickname. Boston Ivy can serve as a low-maintenance ground cover plant in some areas. It's easy to learn how to take care of Boston Ivy. Although dry soil typically does not kill Boston Ivy as houseplants, it only makes them appear dull and wilted. Keep the soil moist whenever possible. It is not necessary to fertilize Boston Ivy when it is planted. Boston ivy can be grown in a dish garden along with other indoor plants that have an upright form. Make sure Boston ivy is what you want to permanently fill the space before you plant it outside. Within a few years, the plant will reach a spread of at least 15 feet, 4.5 meters, and a height of up to 50 feet, 15 meters. 
By keeping it trimmed, you might encourage it to mature into a shrub. On plants grown outdoors, insignificant flowers and dark berries can be seen. 10. Bougainvillea. A showy and extraordinarily colorful evergreen plant for the home, conservatory, or greenhouse is the bougainvillea. The extravagant flowers are available in a wide array of colors, including purple, mauve, pink, apricot, red, yellow, and white. The true flowers, which are tiny and white, are actually surrounded by a central cluster of bulky, paper-thin bracts. In its natural state, bougainvillea is a sprawling climber and shrub with strong thorns that is typically found in gardens in subtropical to tropical climates, or on the exterior of structures, like climbing up a trellis, or over a fence. Sunlight is a favorite of bougainvillea plants, and they require daily exposure to grow. Your bougainvillea's color saturation is influenced by how much sunlight it receives, more light means brighter hues. Bougainvillea plants prefer a moist, acidic, well-drained potting soil that is also well-drained. To ensure a rich, nutrient-rich soil, top your mixture with compost. To reduce the risk of root rot, choose a pot with at least one drainage hole in the base. During the spring, summer, and fall seasons, keep your plant consistently moist. In the winter, keep it almost dry. After giving your bougainvillea a good soaking, wait until the top inch or so of soil has dried out before giving it more water. 11. Carolina Jessamine, Gelsemium Sempervirens. Carolina Jessamine, Gelsemium Sempervirens, which has stems up to 20 feet, 6 meters, long, will climb over anything it can wrap its wiry stem around. Plant it under trees with loose canopies, along fences, on trellises, and arbors, and so forth. The glossy leaves are evergreen, and offer dense protection for the underlying structure. Late winter, and early spring see clusters of fragrant, yellow flowers on Carolina jessamine vines. Following the flowers are seed capsules, which ripen gradually throughout the rest of the season. Although they can tolerate some shade, Carolina jessamine does best in sunny areas. The plant grows slowly, and may become leggy in partial shade as it directs its energy upward growth in search of more light. Pick a spot with healthy, organically rich soil that drains properly. If your soil doesn't meet these requirements, amend it before planting with a lot of compost. Although the plants can withstand drought, regular watering in the absence of rain makes them look their best. Every year in the spring, fertilize the vines. You can use a general-purpose commercial fertilizer, but a 2-3 to three inch, 5-8 to eight centimeters, layer of compost, leaf mold, or aged manure is the best fertilizer for Carolina jessamine plants. 12. Chilean Glory Flower Acrimacarpus scaber, also known as the Chilean Glory Flower, is a strange-looking climber with wiry stems and sparse, dark, evergreen foliage that makes the ideal background for its vivid red, orange, or yellow tubular flowers. It offers a useful screen for the bare bases of climbing roses, or to cover the conifer's balding lower regions. Despite having a delicate appearance, this vine is quite resilient, requires little maintenance, and prefers moderate to slightly dry conditions. A healthy trailing vine must have something to climb on in order to survive. It's fun to climb up walls, trellises, archways, or even trees. These vines require very little upkeep, and will reward you with colorful blooms. They may even draw pollinators, such as hummingbirds, to your garden. To thrive, these vining plants require lots of sunlight. Although they can tolerate some shade, they might not have as many flowers. Put these vines in full sun for the biggest bloom. The rich, light soil is ideal for the chili and glory flower. Before planting, amend the soil with compost or other organic matter to give your glory flower the best possible start. This type of soil is necessary for this vine's need for proper drainage. This climbing plant doesn't require much watering. You might not need to water as frequently if it rains enough. An additional drink will be greatly appreciated during drier times. 13. Chinese Virginia Creeper. Large, dark green, bronze leaves on this hardy climber turn a stunning red in the fall before dropping. Its flowers are a plain green, but they can grow into enticing blue-black berries. 
until the plant becomes well established, give it some support, this may take up to two years. Once the plant has taken root, stray shoots should be tied in. And the plant should be pruned in the fall. Or early winter to keep it under control, stems that are encroaching on windows, gutters. Or roofs should be given special attention. Performs best in average, medium moisture, well-drained soils with full sun to partial shade. This plant tolerates a variety of conditions. And is not picky about the soil. Full shade is tolerated, but sunny areas typically have the best fall color. 14. Chocolate Vine The five-leaf Akebia, also known as the chocolate vine, Akebia kinata, has a strong vanilla scent and is hardy in USDA zones 4 through 9. This deciduous semi-evergreen plant blooms from May through June, and grows quickly to a mature height of 15 to 20 feet, 4.5 to 6 meters. The rich purplish-brown blooms that cover the vine, and the soft chocolate scent of the flowers are what give the chocolate vine its name. Hardy perennials rarely have flowers with a chocolate scent, so this one quality may make growers like this flowering vine. Chocolate vine prefers to grow in a partially shaded area of the garden. Although the plant can grow in full sun, it thrives when protected from the afternoon sun. Chocolate vine should be grown in loamy soil with good drainage and a high organic matter content. 15. Clematis Clematis are popular perennial climbers that provide height and color all season. They look especially nice with roses. There are numerous clematis varieties to grow, with flowers ranging in size from small bells to large dinner plates. Clematis can be beneficial to wildlife by covering walls, fences, and trellises with leaves and flowers, which provide shelter for insects and occasionally birds. Pollinators visit some clematis flowers, and house sparrows may use the fluffy seed heads of clematis tangitica cultivars as nesting material. Clematis vines prefer sunny locations, at least six hours of sun required for blooming, but the soil should be kept cool. Planting some type of ground cover or shallow rooted perennial plants around the clematis is an easy way to accomplish this. To keep the roots cool and moist, a 2 inch, 5 centimeters, layer of mulch can be added. With the exception of watering, clematis vines require little care once established. They should be watered once a week for about an inch, 2.5 centimeters, and more frequently during dry spells. Mulch should be replaced every spring. 16. Clematis Montana Var. Grandiflora. Hundreds of pink or white flowers cover the Clematis Montana climber in the spring, which is a large and well-liked vine. It grows quickly and produces a cascade of lovely flowers. In the spring, cherry pink or white blooms appear, filling the garden with a delightful scent. This woody clematis is vigorous and recognizable and is typically grown to cover walls, fences, tree trunks, arches, garages, and even entire houses. Prefers well-draining, fertile soil for growing. Train up garages, sheds, pergolas, fences, and more. During the flowering season, water frequently. Or use slow-release fertilizer to keep the soil moist but not soggy. Grow in soil that is moist but not soggy, in full sun. Or partial shade. Cover the plant's crown with pebbles, bark, grass. Or other vegetation to shield it from the sun. And heat. 17. Clematis alba luxuriens. A very hardy climber with small flowers that open from midsummer to late autumn is called alba luxuriens. Young white blossoms are open, bell-shaped, single, and two to three inches across. They can have a very slight mauve tint. Leaf color is a light gray-green. Only direct sunlight should be used to grow this woody vine. It thrives in average to evenly moist environments, but it cannot stand water. It is unconcerned about pH or soil type. It can withstand some urban pollution. Consider thickly mulching the root zone in both the summer and winter to conserve soil moisture and protect it in exposed areas or colder microclimates. 18. Clematis Bill Mackenzie The Tangitica Clematis Bill Mackenzie is a large, tenacious climber that adorns your wall, trellis, hedges 
or trees with a summertime abundance of modestly sized, bright yellow nodding flowers. This variety, which blooms later, is a great option for enhancing the garden's interest in the waning summer. And autumn months. They are real charmers with their thinly cut leaves. And thick, curled back, bell-shaped flowers that are stiff like orange peel. The flowers develop into lovely, enormous, feathery seed heads that last the rest of the year. The best conditions for Clematis Bill Mackenzie are sunny or lightly shaded areas. Although it is fully hardy, and not particularly demanding, it will perform poorly in dense, soggy soil. Therefore, good drainage is crucial. No special pruning is required, but if you need to keep it in check, you can give it a hard cut back. Practically speaking, the plant should be cut 10 to 30 centimeters from the ground. This is best done between the end of March and the beginning of April. 19. Clematis Francis Rivis The medium-sized climbing cultivar of Clematis is called Francis Rivis. Deep, rich blue bell-shaped flowers with a white inner skirt are produced by the Clematis Francis Rivis. It reliably blooms every spring, regardless of the climate, and is ideal for a sunny trellis. It is one of the easiest Clematis to maintain because it requires little to no pruning. It is also one of the toughest, making it perfect for sites that are exposed to cold weather. It grows best in moist, well-drained soil, and full sun, or partial shade. Clematis plants prefer to have their heads in the sun, and their feet in the shade. Other plants can keep the roots cool, and shaded. Or you can add a layer of pebbles, or flat stones at the base. Develop in moist, well-drained soil. Due to the soil's texture, which allows extra moisture to drain away, soil is moist without being soggy. The average plant prefers one inch of water per week. 20. Clematis Prince Charles From midsummer to early autumn, Clematis Prince Charles produces masses of mauve blue flowers. Its compact, free-flowering habit makes it an excellent choice for growing in containers or at the front of a small garden border trained up an obelisk. This stunning blue clematis blooms light azure blue with a pink tinge along the central bar. The blooms lose their pink tint as they mature and become more mauve blue. Clematis should be planted in a landscape bed or container with rich, well-draining soil. Water the plant frequently so that the soil stays damp. If at all possible, place the climber so that the stems get at least 4 hours of direct sunlight each day while the plant's base receives some cooling shade. To shade the soil, you can also add annual plants. Or stones close to the base of the plant. Heavy feeders like clematis can gain from routine fertilizing. For the best blooming, fertilize the plant with low nitrogen each spring. And with a balanced fertilizer every 4 to 6 weeks in the summer. 21. Climbing Hydrangea Climbing Hydrangea, Hydrangea anomala, has all of the beauty of a traditional hydrangea bush. But it grows in a trailing variety that can be used to add visual interest to walls or fences. This hydrangea is a flowering deciduous vine native to Asia that should be planted or transplanted in late spring. White lacy blooms cap the lush green ovate leaves in the summer. Climbing hydrangeas are simple to grow. The plants are hardy in USDA plant hardiness zones 5 through 7. Climbing hydrangeas require a rich, moist, well-drained soil. Before planting, if your soil requires improvement, dig in a generous amount of compost. The vine thrives in either full sun or partial shade. Provide some afternoon shade in hotter climates. Choose a northern or eastern exposure when growing climbing hydrangeas against a wall. It's also not difficult to care for climbing hydrangea. To keep the soil moist, water the vine on a regular basis. A layer of mulch around the base of the plant will aid in moisture retention and weed control. 22. Copia scandens. Cup and saucer vine, Copia scandens, is a perennial climber native to Mexico's subtropical regions. It has thin, lightweight leaves and purple flowers that look like a cup, or bell, hence the unusual name. This vine grows quickly, and can reach heights of 30, or 40 feet in its natural habitat. Start seeds indoors in the winter, then transplant seedlings outside after the last frost in the spring. Although it takes a while for cup, 
and saucer vine to bloom, its foliage will quickly form a screen, grow over an arbor, or cover an unsightly fence. Avoid placing the plant in an area where it will be shaded all day if at all possible. The plant prefers a lot of direct sunlight. The cup and saucer vine can be grown outside in USDA hardiness zones 9 to 10. It is sensitive to frost and should be kept indoors during the winter in colder climates. Copia scandens, like most plants, requires more water in the summer and less in the winter. Water the plant frequently during the summer and less frequently during the winter. Plants require weekly watering from March to September. During this time, water-soluble liquid fertilizer is recommended. 23. Combratum Indicum Most vertical gardens and landscapes are dominated by flowering vines. The Rangoon creeper is one of the well-known vines. It is used for its broad growth habit, fragrant flowers, colorful, and eye-catching leaves. And broad leaves. Rangoon creeper has unusual flowers that start out white, turn pink, then deepen to red, and have a delightfully sweet scent. It is popular and often planted close to temples, particularly in South India, due to its mild fragrance and ease of growth. Being a tropical plant, the Rangoon creeper enjoys exposure to direct sunlight. However, it also does well in areas with some shade. Additionally, to encourage the plant to produce more blooms, make sure it receives six straight hours of direct sunlight. It only requires a little water because it is such an adaptable vine. But as the climate changes, the watering schedule changes. For instance, it's recommended to water plants more frequently when the weather is hot. On the other hand, during chilly winters, watering should be done less frequently. 24. Common hop, Humulus lupulus. Common garden hops, Humulus lupulus, can reach a height of 20 feet or more and produce luxuriant green vines that eventually develop creamy cone shaped flowers. Hops are an ornamental choice that is also practical for the home brewer because these cones are a crucial component in the brewing of beer. The vines spread quickly, so they can also offer privacy and shade in the garden. These perennials thrive in light shade and grow well when planted as a decorative covering for unsightly structures like old fences. However, a south-facing location is ideal because hops require lots of sun for a plentiful harvest. The next point brings us to the fact that hops vines can easily climb over fences, trellises, teepees made specifically for the purpose, or even the side of your house. A crucial element in the growth of hops plants is the soil. Again, hops aren't picky and can grow in sand or clay, but for the best yield, the soil should ideally be rich, loamy, and well-drained. Additionally, hops prefer soil pH levels between 6.0 and 6.5, so lime addition may be required. To give your backyard hops plants a healthy start, when you plant them, work 3 tablespoons, 44 milliliters, of all-purpose fertilizer into the soil at a depth of 6 to 8 inches, 15 to 20 centimeters. After that, add supplemental nitrogen every spring and side dress with compost. 25. Crimson Glory Vine The Crimson Glory Vine, Vitus coinyei, has large rounded, dimpled leaves that turn fiery shades of red, gold, and orange in autumn. It's ideal for covering a large structure like a shed or garage where it won't need to be cut back. It is unsuitable for growing on a small trellis. The full sun and good drainage are requirements for the growth of Crimson Glory grape vines. It will also be important to have good air circulation because many plants have demonstrated a vulnerability to disease pressures like powdery mildew. As previously mentioned, pruning a Crimson Glory vine will be crucial for managing the plant's size to control their spread. And keep the vines in the desired shape, growers advise aggressive pruning in the middle of the summer. 26. Curtain Creeper Curtain creeper vines cascading over walls, terrace areas, trellises, or simple supporting structures can add a unique touch to your garden. They can be used as curtains to separate areas or to provide privacy. These evergreen plants can form small bushes that cascade down the sides of pots or baskets. They grow quickly and can climb trellises 
or surrounding vegetation to a height of 8 to 10 meters before falling in beautiful green curtains all around the trees. Or supporting structures, curtain creepers require at least 4 to 6 hours of sunlight per day, but if there is something blocking, it should still work fine with less sunlight. Curtain creeper plants thrive when watered once every 1 to 2 weeks, unless there has been no rain, in which case it requires more frequent watering. Curtain creepers are hardy plants that will thrive with little care as long as they get what they need. 27. Cypress Vine, Ipomoea Quamiclet. Cypress Vine, Ipomoea Quamiclet, is a flowering vine in the bindweed family that has small, delicate, papery star-shaped blooms that are mostly bright red. But flowers aren't the only thing this plant has to offer, it also works well as a foliage plant, with graceful, dainty, and feathery fern-like leaves. Cypress vines are typically grown as annuals, despite the fact that they are technically perennials in frost-free areas of USDA plant hardiness zones 10 and 11. They may return year after year from seeds dropped by the previous season's plants in USDA zones 6 through 9. Planting from seeds should be done in the spring, after the threat of frost has passed. When the soil warms up, the fast-growing vine begins its aggressive climb and blooms in about a month, keep an eye out for straying, invasive vines that may be reaching out to other plants. Although the plants can survive brief dry spells, they thrive in conditions of plentiful moisture. Organic mulch aids in maintaining an even moisture level in the soil, and may stop seeds from taking root where they fall. Cypress vines become weeds if allowed to spread at will. Use a high phosphorus fertilizer right before the first blossoms appear. 28. Downy clematis. Clematis macropatala, also known as the downy clematis, is a robust and early flowering deciduous climber with particularly lovely, nodding, lantern shaped, pale purple blue flowers, measuring 2 to 3 inches across, 5 to 7 centimeters, and embellished with four lance shaped petals and numerous blue or cream stamens. This small flowered clematis blooms in mid to late spring and typically has a second flush of blooms in midsummer. After the flowers, the plant produces very attractive, fluffy, silvery seed heads that continue to add interest throughout the summer. Leaflets with acutely serrated edges make up the foliage of tooth leaves. This classy clematis looks stunning cascading over a pergola, wall, or garden fence, making it a great choice as a ground cover. Also lovely when sprawling through substantial bushes. Thrives in full sun or partial shade, moist, well-drained soil. Clematis prefer to have their feet in the shade and their heads in the sun. Alternatively, add a layer of pebbles or flat stones at the base to keep the roots cool and shaded by other plants. 29. Dutchman's Pipe, Aristolochia tomentosa. The Dutchman's Pipe vine is a native to eastern North America and is a woody deciduous vine. It has a strong growth habit, and when fully grown, can grow up to 20 or 30 feet tall. Although the plants usually bloom in the early summer, pipe vines are best planted in the early spring because of their attractive foliage. The plant is also known as pipe vine, and grows well in USDA zones 8 to 10. In ideal growing conditions, the vine can grow to be as long as 25 feet, 7.5 meters. A trellis or vertical structure is required to support the twining stems and broad foliage of a Dutchman's pipe. Dutchman's pipe favors sunny or partly sunny areas with moist but well-drained soil. This vine might be best placed away from your doorway. The flowers have a variety of foul smells, most of which resemble carrion. The flies that pollinate the flowers are drawn to this offensive smell, but you and your guests might find it repulsive. Water is the primary requirement for Dutchman's pipe vine maintenance. When taking care of pipe vines in containers, don't let the soil dry out completely. Additionally, plants that are in the ground require additional watering. To keep the plant under control, fertilize once a year in the spring. And prune when necessary. To encourage plants that are thicker, pinch back new growth. 30. English Ivy Heterohelix, also known as English ivy, is a perennial plant. It is additionally categorized as a woody vine. English ivy can cover the ground by spreading horizontally. However, because of its aerial rootlets, it can climb to a height of 80 feet. 
Although the plant will eventually produce insignificant greenish flowers, its evergreen leaves are the main reason it is grown. Ivy falls under the category of a foliage plant in this context. The best time to plant English ivy is in the spring. English ivy plants are excellent climbers because their tiny roots that develop along the stems allow them to cling to almost any surface. You can plant English ivy in remote and difficult to reach areas without worrying about maintenance because it is simple to care for. The maintenance of English ivy requires very little effort. Till the plants are established and expanding, water them frequently enough to keep the soil moist. These vines thrive in areas with lots of moisture, but once established, they can withstand dry conditions. 31. Evergreen Clematis A robust ornamental vine with year-round leaf retention is the evergreen clematis. Typically, clematis vines are grown for their fragrant springtime white flowers. These vines, which are common in the Pacific Northwest, climb by twisting their stems around any supports you give them. Over time, they can expand to be 10 feet, 3 meters, wide, and 15 feet, 5 meters, tall. The evergreen clematis blooms best in full sun, but it can also tolerate partial shade. Shade from the hot afternoon sun should be provided in hot climates. Clematis prefer cool feet, so it is best to plant them where nearby shrubs can cast shade over the roots. Or to cover them heavily with mulch. Although established plants can tolerate some drought, you should still water them frequently. Overwatering and soggy conditions should be avoided. 32. Firecracker Vine, Ipamia lobata. Ipamia lobata, also known as the Spanish firecracker vine, love vine, or fire plant, is a summer to fall flowering plant with bright red blooms that resemble firecrackers. The firecracker vine plant can be grown either in the ground or in a container. The firecracker vine is a showy, twining annual that is related to many tenacious climbing plants like morning glory in the Ipamia family, and is ideal for growing up a strong fence or trellis in a full sun area. When the weather in your area warms, plant the vine in a spot that receives direct sunlight. It is advised to use rich, draining soil. If necessary, work finished compost into the soil to increase its fertility. For firecracker vine, this usually takes a few weeks of consistent watering. The plant is somewhat drought tolerant once it is established, but it thrives on routine watering and consistent moisture. Sometimes wet soil will do. 33. Flame Plant Beautiful plant known as the flame vine, Pyrus tegia venista, can be found throughout Florida. Flame vine catches the eye with dense clusters of vibrant orange flowers at a time of the year, when there isn't a lot of way of eye-catching color. The creeper Pyrus tegia venista has a quick growth rate, and can completely swallow up a house in a year. The flowering plant has bunches of trumpet-shaped, bright orange flowers. When mature, this plant can reach a height of 5 feet and continue to grow into its late years. It can be handled fairly quickly, but if ignored, it often damages walls. Pruning them will not only protect your walls, but it will also help them grow and flower better the following season. Select a location that gets full sun or partial shade. Flame vines cling to fences, trellises, walls, and arbors very well. The majority of soils can support them, but if yours is not rich, or has poor drainage, till in a few inches of compost, peat moss, or sand before planting to encourage faster growth. 34. Flowering Maple Flowering maple, Abutilon striatum, thrives in conditions similar to its native tropical habitat. Bright light and warmth will allow it to thrive in your home and flower for the majority of the year. One of its common names comes from the maple leaf-shaped foliage. Because of the shape of the drooping papery flowers, these plants are also known as Chinese lantern plants. From spring to fall, expect large, bell-shaped flowers in red, pink, orange, yellow, or peach to cover flowering maples. Abutilon, like mallows, and hollyhocks, belongs to the Mulvaceae family. This genus contains over 100 beautiful flowering shrubs. It can reach a height of 10 feet, 3 meters, in its natural habitat. It's best to keep it between 2 to 3 feet indoors, 60 to 90 centimeters. Dry soil patches may result from uneven watering. The plant will quickly wilt 
and possibly lose its leaves and flowers as a result of dry roots. Use a pot with a drainage hole whenever possible to avoid soggy soil, which can cause root rot. The blossoming of flowering maples requires lots of light. A sunny window should be in front of it. If you want, you can move it outside during the summer. Only make sure to protect it from the intense midday sun. 35. Hetera algeriensis Gloire de Marengo Algerian ivy Gloire de Marengo is an excellent indoor foliage plant with a lovely shape and lobe leaves. This genus plants are hardy and easy to grow, making them very popular. They can be potted and will climb any surface. It has been artificially cultivated into a variety of shapes and colors. Light is essential for the healthy growth and shape of Algerian ivy Gloire de Marengo. It grows well in bright light, so it is recommended that it be exposed to indirect light for 6 to 8 hours per day. Avoid direct sunlight because it can burn the leaves, especially in the summer. In the winter, supplement with artificial light. Although it can grow in low light, prolonged darkness can result in faded leaves and slender stems. This reduces its ornamental value and makes it susceptible to pests. Gloire de Marengo Algerian ivy grows best in well-drained fertile soil that is neutral to slightly acidic. The ideal pH range is 6.0 to 7.5. The plant can survive in any loose, ventilated culture medium and tolerates poor soil. To ensure long-term healthy growth and leaf brightness, combine garden soil or peat soil in a 1 to 1 ratio with leaf mold. When the soil is completely dry, add water until the excess runs off the pot. To prevent root rot and other diseases, don't let water collect at the pot's base. Every year or two, replace the pot and half of the soil. 36. Honeysuckle The sweet floral scent of honeysuckle in the air signals the arrival of summer. 180 species of low-maintenance evergreen and deciduous climbers, or shrubs with twining stems make up the honeysuckle family, Lunisura spp. Honeysuckle flowers with tubular, or two-lipped lips are easy for bees, and hummingbirds to enter. In the fall, after the yellow, red, pink, purple, or white blooms fade, you'll find a bounty of juicy berries. Full sunlight is ideal. Even though honeysuckle can tolerate partial shade, it will not bloom as much and may lose its leaves if not given enough sun. Make sure your honeysuckle is planted in organically rich, well-drained soil. It should be moist but not soggy, as overwatering will cause problems. They thrive in soil that is acidic to moderately alkaline, with a pH range of 5.5 to 8.0. If you want your honeysuckle to climb, and aren't planting it against a house, or other structure, you'll need to put up support structures for it to grow. Install anything the plant can grab onto, such as a trellis, pole, fence, or other sturdy structure. Make sure you do this before planting your honeysuckle. Plants should be about 6 to 12 inches away from the support once they are set up. 37. Hyacinth Bean, Lab Lab Purpureus. The purple hyacinth bean plant, also known as Dolichos Lab Lab, or Lab Lab purpurea, is an attractive, annual vine that produces interesting, reddish-purple pods that are roughly the same size as lima bean pods in addition to lovely, pinkish-purple blossoms. Any garden will benefit from the vibrant color and interest the hyacinth bean plant brings from spring to fall. Despite not being picky about soil type, purple hyacinth beans grow best in full sunlight. These robust growers do need a strong support that is at least 10 to 15 feet, 3 to 4.5 meters, tall. This lovely vine is often grown on a strong trellis, fence, or arbor by gardeners. Lots of water is preferred by this plant, but make sure the ground is consistently moist rather than wet. When the top 3 inches of soil start to dry out, water the plant slowly and thoroughly throughout its entire root system. In the middle of a midsummer drought, you might need to water every other day, but if it rains enough, you might be able to avoid watering for several weeks. 38. Hydrangea anomalous subsp. Petiolaris. Suitable for a shady or north-facing wall, climbing hydrangea, hydrangea anomalous subsp. Petiolaris is a useful, low-maintenance climbing shrub. 
it takes a while to get going and frequently experiences slow initial growth. But the wait was worthwhile. It produces enormous, white lacecap-style hydrangea flowers in the middle of the summer that can nearly completely encircle the stems. Any part of a hydrangea is poisonous to dogs, cats, and horses, so take care where you plant it. Climbing hydrangeas are simple to grow. The plants are hardy in USDA plant hardiness zones 5 through 7. Climbing hydrangeas require a rich, moist, well-drained soil. Before planting, if your soil requires improvement, dig in a generous amount of compost. The vine thrives in either full sun or partial shade. Provide some afternoon shade in hotter climates. Choose a northern or eastern exposure when growing climbing hydrangeas against a wall. It's also not difficult to care for climbing hydrangea. To keep the soil moist, water the vine on a regular basis. A layer of mulch around the base of the plant will aid in moisture retention and weed control. 39. Ipomoea coccinea. The red morning glory, or Ipomoea coccinea, is a fast-growing, self-supporting plant with heart-shaped leaves and trumpet-shaped flowers in a range of colors, including red, blue, purple, white, pink, and bicolors. Typically, the flowers open in the morning and close at noon or shortly after. They bloom in the early summer through the fall. It has orangey-red trumpet-shaped blooms. Vine support, full sun, and humus-rich soil are required. At 45 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit, they are frost-tender. Most plants require about an inch of water per week. Composting your soil will improve its texture and water-holding or draining capacity. A 3-inch layer of mulch will help to keep soil moisture in place. 40. Ipomoea tricolor heavenly blue, morning glory. Ipomoea tricolor heavenly blue is a popular morning glory variety with large, heart-shaped leaves and vibrant, azure blue trumpet-shaped flowers. The flowers, which open in the morning to reveal their white and yellow throats, close in the afternoon, hence the common name. Morning glory blooms continuously from early summer to early fall, producing new flowers on a daily basis. It is prized for its fast-growing climbing habit, making it ideal for hiding an unforgiving fence, climbing a wall, or scrambling through arbors and trellises. Give it room to expand and watch it keep rising. The ideal soil for growing morning glories is moderately fertile, well-drained, and kept consistently moist until the plant is established. Adult plants can tolerate poor, dry conditions because they are less particular about their soil. You can apply a balanced liquid fertilizer every month during the growing season, though this is typically not necessary. Avoid over-fertilizing as this can result in more foliage than flowers. Again, established morning glory plants can tolerate drier conditions, but water liberally during the growing season. And once or twice a week during dry spells. Winter watering should be reduced. The morning glory doesn't require overwintering because it is an annual. In USDA hardiness zones 1 through 11, it thrives in the outdoors from spring to fall. Although it tolerates some shade, the plant prefers full sun. 41. Japanese Wisteria The lovely climbing vine known as Japanese Wisteria, Wisteria floribunda, is known to adorn arbors and trellises across the nation. It has a wonderful scent. And the colors and blooms are eye-catching. But if not handled or placed correctly, it can become destructive and a major hassle for you and your neighborhood. As the foliage grows, wisteria produces pale lavender or white flowers that are lightly fragrant. Late in May, pea-like flowers begin to bloom. From the base of the cluster to the tip, the flowers open gradually. Fall foliage has a yellow hue. The best way to grow wisteria floribunda is with some kind of support, like wires, trellises, arbors, and pergolas. If the right supports are added, such as rows of strong, rust-resistant wire attached 4 to 6 inches from the wall, solid, vertical surfaces can be used. Wisteria vines need at least 6 hours of direct sunlight each day in order to bloom properly. During the warmer months, water newly planted wisteria every day to promote establishment. With established vines, watering can be cut to twice weekly because they are so hardy. Apply a slow-release fertilizer in the spring and fall 
or a balanced fertilizer once a year in the spring. Wisteria can grow in a variety of soil types as long as they drain well and are consistently moist but not soggy. Wet environments are not good for wisteria. It prefers a location with loose, rich in organic matter loamy soil. 42. Jasminum nudiflorum. One of the earliest flowering plants, winter jasmine, Jasminum nudiflorum, typically blooms in January. It lacks the family's distinctive scents, but the cheery, buttery blooms help dispel winter gloom and encourage the cabin-fevered gardener. This decorative plant grows quickly. And winter jasmine care is simple. It is typically grown as a climber, with galvanized wires trained against sunny walls. Winter jasmine prefers full sun and well-drained soil. Surprisingly, it does not appear to be picky about soil quality, but the addition of some compost may be beneficial. Water winter jasmine when the top inch of soil feels dry to the touch. Winter jasmine can be grown in USDA hardiness zones 6 to 10. It can withstand temperatures as low as 5 degrees Fahrenheit in the winter. The plants do not require much fertilization, but if you want an abundance of flowers, apply a slow-release fertilizer to the plant's base. Winter jasmine can be used to hide unsightly walls and fences as a ground cover or train to grow over a trellis. Winter jasmine can become weedy as its stems root at the internodes and form new plants. Plants can grow to be 4 to 15 feet, 1 to 4.5 meters, tall, but with a little trimming, they can be kept in check. 43. Lepageria rosea. Lepageria rosea plants, also known as Chilean bellflowers, are native to Chile's coastal regions. Lepageria is a perennial vine that is half-hardy. From the middle of summer to the end of the season, it blooms and blooms with dark pink trumpet-shaped flowers Lepageria foliage is sharply pointed and leathery in texture. Plants of Lepageria rosea are long, spreading vines that can grow to be 15 feet, 4.6 meters, long, and spread just as wide. The leaves have a thick, leathery feel, as do the flowers, which are 3 to 4 inch, 7.6 to 10 centimeters, long pendulous bells that appear red in nature but come in a variety of colors when grown. Although the Chilean bellflower vine is evergreen, it is only hardy in USDA zones 9A through 11. It can withstand some frost, but prolonged cold will kill it. You can grow your Chilean bellflower vine in a container if you live in a colder climate. The plants thrive in well-draining, well-watered containers. Lepageria prefers partial shade and shade from the hot afternoon sun. Lepageria prefers cool roots, so keep the pot shaded in hot weather. Lepageria plant care requires some effort wherever it is grown. The plant prefers well-draining soil that is never dry, so you may need to water it every day. Watering on a regular basis during dry spells. Avoid overwatering container plants, but make sure the soil isn't allowed to dry out either. For container plants, this means giving the soil a small amount of water each day. 44. Lunicera ex telmaniana, Telman's honeysuckle. Lunicera telmaniana is a deciduous climber with twining branches. It has dark green leaves that are white underneath and can grow up to 5 meters tall. It blooms in clusters of long, tubular orange yellow flowers from midsummer to late autumn. Telman's honeysuckle prefers humus rich, fertile soil that is moist but well drained. It prefers partial shade but can withstand full sun. It prefers a warm wall to grow against and support to climb up, making it a great addition to most garden styles. It can be grown in a large pot for the patio, but it should not be allowed to dry out. After flowering, a light pruning can be performed. 45. Mandevilla. Mandevilla is a genus of flowering vines that thrives in tropical and subtropical climates, and is also referred to as rock trumpet. The showy, fragrant five-petal trumpet-shaped flowers typically have pink, red, and white hues with occasionally yellow throats. Even though they can bloom well into the fall in warm climates, they typically bloom in the summer. Some species within the genus have more, smaller blooms, while others have fewer, larger blooms. The typical color of their ovate leaves is glossy green. These fast-growing vines should be planted in the middle to late spring, once the temperature is consistently warm and the risk of frost has passed. The kind of light that mandevillas receive is crucial to their care. 
Mandevilla vines require direct sunlight to produce healthy flowers. However, they can tolerate some shade. The Mandevilla species can withstand some dryness while still blooming, unlike many other flowering plants. However, they prefer a constant moisture level, so try to keep the soil damp but not drenched. Spray the leaves as well to get rid of any pests. And increase the humidity around the plant. Water the plant slowly to give the soil time to absorb the moisture. Give your Mandevilla plant a high phosphorus, water-soluble fertilizer once every two weeks to ensure the best possible summer blooms. Your Mandevilla vine will continue to bloom beautifully if you do this. 46. Money Plant Because of its exceptional qualities and presumptive values in life, the money plant is a common indoor plant that most people want to keep in their homes. Money plants are evergreen climbers that can reach heights of 20 meters and need less maintenance than other indoor plants. If you want to keep yours in a pretty pot or jar, they can grow easily in soil as well as in those types of containers. While many types of money plants require little care, there are some plant care guidelines you can adhere to make sure your lucky plants live long and prosperous lives. The majority of money plants are specimens of high humidity that require a moist environment. It's a great idea to mist the plant to add humidity and keep the leaves clean. This can be achieved by keeping the plant in a space with a humidifier. Start your money tree and peat moss and fertilizer rich potting soil. Once a month during the growing season, add liquid fertilizer. When it comes to fertilizing, wait until spring. 47. Moonflower, Ipomoea alba. A night garden can benefit from the incredible beauty and potent fragrance that the delicate perennial vine moonflower can bring. This vine, which is frequently grown as an annual outside of its USDA hardiness zones for tropical and subtropical regions, is occasionally referred to as a night-blooming species of morning glory. Large, heart-shaped, dark green leaves are attached to sturdy, slightly prickly stems on this plant. Its trumpet-shaped flowers bloom from midsummer until the end of the season. They typically reach lengths of 6 inches and a width of 3 to 6 inches. They are an iridescent white color. As the sun sets and on cloudy days, the cone-shaped buds open to reveal the blooms. They remain open all night, filling the air with their delectable aroma, before closing once more the following morning. Full sun, or at least 6 hours of direct sunlight most days, is ideal for moonflower growth. It can tolerate partial shade, though it may not flower as well. Numerous types of soil are suitable for this vine. However, it favors a rich, loamy soil with excellent drainage and a pH range of slightly acidic to neutral. A moderate amount of soil moisture is ideal for moonflower. Young plants need regular irrigation to keep their soil moist but not soggy. In excessively wet soil, the roots may rot. When the soil in the top inch feels dry, water established plants. Long dry spells can kill the vine, but short droughts are tolerable. 48. Passion Flower Vine There are numerous types of passion flowers, including shrubs, annuals, perennials, and trees. A sunny location with moist but well-drained soil. And cover from a wall or trellis is where you should plant a passion flower. Fruits from passion flowers are palatable. It should be placed in a pollinator garden for fruiting success. A passion flower has five or ten petals arranged in a flat or reflex circle at the base of a wide, flat petal. Passion flowers grow quickly and reappear each year. When the weather is still warm, planting is best done in the spring or early fall. If you have young children or pets, consider which type of plant you are growing because plant toxicity varies by type. They should typically be grown in average, but well-drained soil, in full sun to partial shade. For many species, which can be harmed by strong winds, or inclement weather, a sheltered location is advised, such as against a garden wall. Your vines should be planted in rich, moist soil that drains well. The pH of the soil is unimportant, and can range from 6.1 to 7.5, which is in the neutral to acidic range. After planting, passion flowers need to be given a thorough watering. Beyond that, during their growing season, they typically thrive with one or two weekly waterings. A weekly supply of 1 to 1.5 inches of water is recommended. 
49. Piliostegia viburnoids. Excellent. An unique evergreen climber that grows naturally in China, Taiwan, and in India. Closely related to Schizophragma, Piliostegia viburnoids is grown for its large, glossy, evergreen leaves that stand out against the stunning panicles of milky white flowers in the late summer. This is a great choice of climber for a protected wall, fence, or growing up old trees to give them additional interest, even though it takes a little while to establish, it will flourish in in the full sun, or partial shade. It thrives in well-drained, fertile soil. Piliostegia viburnoids grows best in warmer climates, and should be protected from harsh winter frosts as a young plant by wrapping it in fleece, straw, or old leaves. Plant in a location that is not exposed to strong, cold winds. It may take several years before it fully blooms. 50. Rhodochiton atrosanguineus, purple bell vine. A herbaceous plant called the Rhodochiton, Rhodochiton atrosanguineus, is distinguished by its heart shaped leaves and drooping, three inch tubular purple black flowers. They produce eye catching blooms that improve the beauty of your outdoor garden and are frequently referred to as purple bell vines. These vines have a maximum height of about 10 feet and bloom from summer to fall. They are native to Mexico, where gardeners frequently grow them as a half hardy annual plant. Although purple bell vine can tolerate some shade, it thrives in direct sunlight and bears many more flowers when it has all day access to the sun. For best growing conditions in regions with extremely hot climates, afternoon shade is required. In terms of soil, purple bell vine requires a humus rich, fertile, consistently moist, and well draining soil. The ideal soil is one with a loam base and lots of compost. In both heat zones 2 and 8 as well as zones 10 and 11, purple bell vine is adaptable. If you reside in a lower zone, consider cultivating these vines as an annual in containers with a soil mix. Made up of two parts sphagnum peat moss, one part perlite, and one part loamy soil that has been thoroughly mixed. If you like the video, please like this video and subscribe our channel. And don't forget to press bell button below this video to get future video updates.